Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. I like to cover things on my channel which are difficult to find solutions to problems that you run into and you just can't seem to find them easily on Google. So, today we're going to talk about LexD containers mounting host folders. So Docker containers have to mount folders on the Docker host in order to have persistent data because Docker containers are basically read-only. And this is an example of a Docker Compose file and you can see where it's mounting a data directory and it's also mounting a Let's Encrypt folder. And in both cases, uh, you can see that there's a mapping from inside the uh, Docker folder to out at the Docker host. And this is pretty straightforward. So LexD can also mount host folders and LexD containers have a read-write file system, unlike Docker. So accessing host folders is normally not necessary. And normally everything that you would do, you would do inside of a LexD container, since it's pretty much like working within a normal operating system. So LexD can mount host folders by adding an attribute to the container via the LexC CLI to mount a file system. The file system that is mounted is read-only by default as a security precaution enforced by the LexD daemon. We are going to learn how to map a host file system to a container and then remap the container user ID to a user ID on the host in order to enable write access from the LexD container. So in order to mount a host folder to a LexD container, we're going to use the LexC config command. And here's an example of what that would look like. We do a LexC config device add the name of the container that we want to add this access for, and then the name of a disk name, and that's pretty much an arbitrary name as you'll see, the word disk, and then source equals some path on the host, and then path equals some path on the container. So basically this is a container mount point to mount whatever data is in this particular host path. So here you go, the container name is the name of the LexD container, the D name is the arbitrary name of your mounted host file system, the host path is the full pathway of your LexD host you want to access, and the container path is the path to serve as a mount point to associate with that host path as mentioned earlier. So the container will have read-only access to the LexD path on the host once you've accomplished this LexC config device add command. So now we want to make the mount point read-write. In order to do that, the subordinate GID file contains the username and a range of group IDs that a user is allowed to use. And you can cat that file by doing a cat slash etsy slash sub GID. And then to allow LexD to remap your user ID on the host, you find out your LexD host UID by simply doing the ID command and assuming I'm user 1000, the following command will allow the LexD daemon, which runs under root, to remap my host user ID inside of a container. So here it is in term echo and then root colon 1000 since I'm user 1000 colon 1. And I believe that the 1 is associated with the ID of the daemon um, account. And then we simply uh, pseudo that uh, with T over to uh, the sub GID file, which concatenates that into the sub GID file. So this is done only once on the LexD host and will allow remapping for all LexD containers on the host to your 1000 user if so desired. So then we can remap the host ID in the container 
And to remap the host ID inside of the container, we simply do Alexi exec Bosch. And then we add user Scott because we want a user name inside the container to map to. And then I'm saying, what is the ID for Scott? And then I'm exiting out of the container. And then I'm going to remap host ID 1000 for Scott on the Lexd host to host 1001 for Scott inside of the container. And that looks like lexc config set test is the name of my container raw dot ID map and I say both 1000 over to 1001 and then I do a lexc restart test and at that point the host folder mounted inside the lexd container will be a read write container so let's go see how this is done so here I am on my lexd host and I'm going to do a lexc list and you can see here that I have my Windows 11 and also my Ubuntu VM, which are both LexD virtual machines, which were covered in two previous videos that I encourage you to go off and take a look at. So for today, we're going to go ahead and create an Ubuntu 2004 container called test, just with the default profile and set auto start equal to true. And we're not going to worry about presenting that on the main network because there's really no need for this. So we'll do another LexC list. We can see that our test container is currently running and is offered on an internal NAT 10.45.70 network. Let's enter our new container with the LexC exec test Bosch. And let's do an add user Scott. Give Scott a password. And then we'll ask you over to the account Scott. Now let's make a directory called host data and go to the desktop and create a folder up here called my desk. Let's exit out of the Scott account on the folder, exit the folder, and now let's do a Lexi config device add our container test, my disk, which is just an arbitrary name, disk with a source of slash home slash Scott slash desktop slash my desk, and there that my desk folder is on the desktop of my Lexi host, my Lexd host and then path equals slash home slash Scott slash host data, which is the folder that I just created. It says device my disk added to test. Let's connect back into the folder with the Lexi exec test Bosch. Let's SU back over to Scott. Let's do an LS CD into host data come up here to the host and we'll add a file called test from host.txt. Now I'll close the file manager and I'll do an ls and there's our file test from host.txt. Now let's try to create a new file with the touch command from the lexd container side and we'll say test lexd data dot text and you can see that we got a permission denied because we only have read access to the host folder at this time so let's exit back out of the container with two exit commands and then let's do a cat slash etsy slash sub GID and we can see the contents of the sub GID file currently only has the Scott user in it. So I'm going to do an ID and I can see 
that my user ID for my Scott account on my LexD host is UID 1000. So in order to add the Scott account to be able to remap that on the containers from the LexD host, I have to perform an echo root colon user 1000 colon one, and that's the daemon ID, and I sudo t that over to the sub UID or G, a sub GID folder or file that we just examined. Now if I cat the file again, you can see that I now have a root colon 1000 colon one. So to remap the host ID inside of the container, I need to go back into the container and do Alexi exec test Bosch. And then I need to do a SU over to, or actually I can just do an ID of Scott from here. And you can see that Scott has the UID of 1001. So I can exit out of the container. At this point, I can do a Lexi config set my container test raw.id map both 1000 to 1001. And that will grant me rewrite access once I restart the container. So I'll do a Lexi restart test. So now let's do a Lexi exec test Bosch to re-enter our container and ask you over to the Scott account. Do an LS. This time we'll CD into host data. And in host data, if we do an LS, we have the test from host that we created from the host side. And now we're going to do a touch of lexd dash data dot text and you can see it created the file if I do an ls there it is if I open the folder on my host end there the file is and of course I can manipulate the file that was created from the host by doing a remove on test from host dot text and it will be successfully deleted so I have read write access in both directions from my LexD container username Scott back to my host username Scott. So here we are on the GUI interface of my LexDware LexD dashboard which I presented on the channel previously and in this case I'm on my host that hosts my Nginx proxy manager and this is a LexD container in which I have my Nginx proxy manager loaded and I'm in the backups directory. So this is an application um, example because here you can see that I performed a backup and that this backup has been performed, uh, I believe uh, a couple of days ago uh, and if we look down here at the command prompt on my LexD host, you can see that I have several backup files for LexD containers. But when I created this association or mount point for slash var slash LexD slash backups, similar to what we did for my desk up here in our demo, uh, it when I perform the backups, it creates a folder according to whatever the address of the LexD host is. So the LexD host that we were just looking at is 172.16.1.58. So if we CD into 172.16.1.58 and you do an LS, it has a default directory and that is the default project, which is a default in any LexD unless you've created other projects. If we CD inside of it and we do an LS, 
there is an npm directory because I performed a backup of my npm. And if I cd into npm and I do an ls, you can see there is the tar.gz compressed backup file for the LexD container. So this is just an example of a practical application that you might want to mount a folder on your LexD host back to a container. So in summary, we learned that we can mount host folders to be accessed from a LexD container. By default, mounted host folders are read-only from the LexD container by design for security on the LexD host. We learned how to remap the LexD container user ID to a user ID on the LexD host to allow mounted folders to be read-write. And a valid use case for this might be mounting a host folder from the LexD dashboard application, which I covered previously on the channel, to map slash var slash lexdware slash backups for container backups so that your backups can be stored on your LexD host instead of inside of the container. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like and tick the notification bell and we'll see you next time.